Welcome to Vlogmas Day 22. It is also National Mathematics Day in India. So to celebrate, I'm going to share with you four tips, shortcut type things that might be helpful for your students and possibly yourself. We're wasting time. <laughs> Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm Allie Mack and I'm currently a seventh grade math teacher. While you're here, please click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any other videos from me. Do it now. So let me just start off this video by saying I am so happy you decided to join me for Vlogmas Day 22. Oh my goodness. And I also want to share with you what makes this day so special. To start, it is Mother's Day in Indonesia. It is Teacher's Day in Cuba. It is Unity Day in Zimbabwe. Hey, that rhymes, I'm a poet. Don't know it. Old joke, sorry. And then what brings us to today's video, what we're mainly gonna talk about, or the theme of today, it is National Mathematics Day in India, which if you've seen this video or you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I am a math teacher. So I have to do something to celebrate this day. There's not a better day to do that than December 22nd, Vlogmas Day 22. So how does one celebrate National Mathematics Day, you might ask? From what I've read, it is celebrated with numerous educational events in schools and in universities throughout the country, India. And the day, December 22nd, was chosen to honor a famous mathematician from India, Srinivasa Ramanujan. He was born December 22nd, 1887, and he passed away at a very young age of 32, 33-ish, which was a shame because he was brilliant, declared a child prodigy at 11 mastered trigonometry at 13. They even made a movie about him. It's titled, The Man That Knew Infinity. Let's stop right there for a second and talk about what a great title that was. That title is, I am just sad I did not think about it. It has such a good ring to it. And it looks like quite like a really good movie actually. Now, obviously there's a lot more to Ramanujan than what I am going to say just this little bit in, in the intro. So I'm gonna leave a documentary that's about 50 minutes long in the description if you care to learn more about this amazing, fascinating person. So to honor Jarini Vasa Ramanujan, I am gonna share with you my four favorite tricks I have learned to show students. And you can tell them that this is a shortcut still teach them the normal way to do whatever it is the skill is but these are shortcuts these are tricks in fact some of them i still use as an adult today when i'm trying to solve real world problems so the moment you've all been waiting for let's get into it oh my gosh my cat is jumping into a box Are you okay muffin i want to go check on her okay so Back to original programming, the moment you've all been waiting for, let me share with you my four favorite math tricks. Okay, so to all my American friends, you know the struggle of teaching conversions between the English system, particularly when you are measuring fluids. You know, gallons, quarts, pints, ounces, that kind of thing. So obviously the metric system is way easier when it comes to this but that doesn't change the fact that in America, we use the English system of measurement. So I'm gonna show you a quick little thing that I use myself and I have shown children to help them remember how many pints are in a gallon, how many quarts are in a gallon, how many this, how many that, blah, 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 blah. So let me start by sharing you a story. Many of you math teachers probably already know this one, but for those of you that are not math teachers, let me tell you a story about King Gallon. Okay, so there was a king. His name was King Gallon. So King Gallon 
had four queens. Every queen had two daughters or princesses. And every princess had two cats. So you see, if you were to ask me how many cups are in a gallon, you could just visually look and say two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 cups in a gallon. Well, what about pints? How many pints are in a gallon? Two, four, six, eight. Okay, what if I had three gallons? How many quarts would that be? So four times three is 12. See what I'm saying? See what I mean? Pretty cool, huh? Let's go to the next one. Okay, so here's an oldie but a goodie when comparing fractions. Now, let me point out it is very important that you teach the kids the skill behind this before you show them the shortcuts. So there's that disclaimer. So all you have to do to compare to see which one is greater is multiply four times two and we get eight. Multiply three times three and we get nine. So we can clearly see that three fourths is greater than two thirds. Now, I don't think I would be doing my duty as a math teacher if I did not show you why this trick work. So basically, it's a shortcut. So if I multiply this and this by this denominator, that gives me the new fraction nine twelfths. And then I multiply this and this by this denominator, which gives me the new fraction, eight twelfths. So basically when we just did the tops, this times this and this times that, we just did, we just cut this bottom part out. Okay, so you did come up with the same denominator, it's just you didn't see it on your work. Trick number three I wanted to share with you, I learned this this year, and if you've watched any of my previous vlogs, you saw where I learned this trick from a student when I was teaching virtually, but I still wanted to point it out. So the skill is changing a decimal into a fraction. Now, I always taught students the poem. Reading decimals is easy, you see. They have two names, like you and me. First, you say the name as if there were no dot, so 475. So 475, then you say the name of the last place value spot, 475 thousandths. Okay, so the problem came because kids did not know their place values. And I have noticed as a math teacher, anytime a kid has to remember something, they're not gonna remember it. Okay, so let me show you this trick. So you're gonna go ahead and put your fraction bar under your decimal. Wherever you see the decimal, you're going to put a one there. And however many digits you have, you're going to put zeros. Since there are three decimals past the, since there are three digits past the decimal, we put three zeros. So our new fraction would be 475 thousandths. Okay, pretty cool. So the last trick I'm going to show you that I've learned, I learned this from my ninth grade math teacher. The point in this is to help kids remember their rules for multiplying and dividing integers or rational numbers. Basically when you have positives and negatives thrown into the mix. Okay, so the way that I was taught to remember this is look at the plus is positive and the minus is negative. And you might be thinking, well, duh. Now the way we use, most people teach this is if they have the same sign, it's positive. And if they have different signs, it's negative. That doesn't always work. So this is just an extra little tool to help students that did not understand it when you presented it that way or showed models and diagrams and all that. So this is just an extra tool for your toolbox. Okay, so if a good person moves into town, that's good. If a bad person 
moves out of town, that's good. If a good person moves out of town, that's bad. And if a bad person moves into town, that's good. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so that's my tricks. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. If you found it helpful, informative, or even entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe. Comment below the infinity emoji. And as always, you guys have the best day ever, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.